Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you so much for this morning that you have prepared for us to hear from you. We pray that you may bless our hearts immensely. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. So my name is Kuria Maina, and I'm born again. Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. Um, it's, it's such an honor and a privilege to stand in front of you here this morning, it's still morning, to share the word of God with you this morning. Uh, so we'll dive straight into the word because of time. And this morning we are going to pray about the power of prayer and fasting. Because uh, the vision for this particular season is that of restoration. Hallelujah. And we believe that restoration cannot happen outside of us setting aside uh, some time to seek the Father's heart concerning that which he has prepared for us this year. So the vision for this, year, the, for this season is uh, restoration. And we are talking about restoration of the principle of prayer and fasting. For some of us, we maybe fast more often than not. But for some, maybe it is a season where you're like, I, this again. But prayer and fasting should not be something that is laborious. It, is not, it should be something that it is hard to do. Because when God gives you something to do, he also avails the grace for it. Hallelujah. He avails the grace for it. So in this particular season, we are going to enjoy it and we are going to have a good time in God's presence. Hallelujah. So Romans chapter 5 verse 17 says that, for if by one man's sin, death reigned through the one, much more those who have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, they will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. For if by one man's sin, offense, death reigned through the one, much more those who have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, they will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. I want to focus on the part of the gift of righteousness. But before we get there, for if by one man's sin, when Paul was writing to the church of Rome. This was one of his last letters that he wrote. And the book of, Rome is an, uh, the book of Romans is an amazing book. Actually, scholars believe that the greatest chapter in the Bible is found in the book of Romans. That is Romans chapter 8. Because Romans chapter 8 talks about for there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And then it ends by talking about nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Actually, the book of Romans, there is someone called John Chrysostom. He was an amazing powerful preacher of the word of God. And he would read the book of Romans once, I think, every week in his, his entire life. Every week he would read the book of Romans from start to finish. It is a powerful book. It is the very book that's, that brought Martin Luther, one of the reformers, into the, the life of Christianity as God had prepared him. Because Martin Luther was sitting by a tree and uh, he, was, he was there battling so many things and there, was a, there were little kids that were playing there and Martin Luther had the, book, had the Bible by, beside him. So those kids began to sing and they say, pick it up and read it through, pick it up and read it through. So when Martin Luther opened the Bible, he opened in the book of Romans. And in the book of Romans, it read, the just shall live by faith. And his life was transformed from that day. Because Martin Luther was a man who really struggled in his thoughts. It was a time he was in his monastery and he thought that he had seen an image of the devil by the wall and he took his ink, threw it by the wall. So when he he read the book of Romans and realized that the just shall live by faith. His life was completely transformed. Hallelujah. So I don't know why I went there, but the book of Romans is an amazing book. Pick it up and read it through. Hallelujah. So for if by one man's sin, whose sin? Adam's sin. Death reigned through the one. Much more. Those who have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So there is a life that each and every one of us has been called to. Each and every one of us here from all the way to the top to, the, to here, there is a life that we have been called to and that is a life of reigning. Hallelujah. But, Jesus, but, but Paul writes and says that this life that we have been called to of reigning is not much a life of where we anchor ourselves in our own works. You get what I mean? Like we anchor ourselves in that which we have done. And that is why the text that we have read in Habakkuk says, this is what the proud do, but they just live by faith. So Paul writes and says, listen, the righteous, the, for if by one man's sin, then through the one, much more those who have received the, the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, they will reign through the one who? Jesus Christ. So righteousness is not about what we need to do. Righteousness is about what has already been done for us and us by faith accepting it into our lives. Hallelujah. Because he writes and says that righteousness is a gift. 
Hallelujah. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, uh, we're still talking about the, the power of prayer and fasting. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it says, For he who knew no sin became sin so that we through him might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the life of righteousness that we have been called to is the life of accepting that which Christ Jesus did for us on the cross. And when he said it is finished, he, had, he ushered us into, into a life of reigning. So I don't know what you're going through in this, season, in this particular season of your life. I don't know what the enemy has tried to bring down at your feet. I don't know what the enemy has tried to bring in your family. But Paul is reminding us that it is by the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace that we reign over everything and anything that the enemy enemy has placed on our feet. Hallelujah. Because in John chapter 10, John chapter 10 verse 10, it says that the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came, why? So that you may have life and have it more abundantly. There is a life that God has designed for us. There is a life that God desires for each and every one of his sons. Hallelujah. And it is a life of victory, and it is a life of reign, and it is a life of abundance. That is the idea that God has for each and every one of us. Hallelujah. The Bible says that you, though you are evil, if, you, if, you are athlete, if your son comes and asks you for bread, you will not give him stone. Or if he comes and asks you for fish, you will not give him snake. How much more your heavenly father? Hallelujah. So this is the life that we have been called to. This is the life that we have been called to by the Father, a life of reigning and the abundant life. But sometimes we don't get to experience those things. Sometimes, like we have said, the vision that we have set for our lives does not mirror the things that we read in the Bible, does not mirror the things that we have seen God do for others. He says the vision is yet for an appointed time. It is yet for an appointed time. Maybe your time has been three years. Maybe your time has been 10 years. Maybe your time has been five years. And you're looking at this particular vision and you're like, what is up with this thing? The Bible is reminding us that there's a patience that God is calling us to. And that patience in that season of waiting, he's still calling us to have faith in him because he is faithful. God has a good record of being faithful. God has a good record of being faithful. And that is why in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, we, he, he displayed for us a hall of faith. A hall of faith. People who had faith in him and they got to experience the life that he had prepared for them. We see that by faith, Abraham. By faith, Sarah. By faith, by faith. It is by faith that we walk into the things that God has prepared for us. Hallelujah. But when we talk about faith, we are not negating that which we need to do and our part. But we are saying that faith is an integral part of our lives. Hallelujah. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Maybe this particular, or maybe last year, you had set aside things that you were supposed to do. You had set aside things that you were supposed to accomplish at your workplace. You had set aside things that you were supposed to accomplish in your business, but you never got to see them. I want to submit to you that God is a faithful God. That even though the vision is yet to be seen, you will walk into the things that God has prepared for you by faith. And sometimes it's not even about our businesses. Sometimes it's about our family. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's about the spouse that we have been praying for for years. Sometimes it is our child who we has gone wayward and he has gone, he or she has gone into the world. Sometimes it is about our siblings. And we look at their lives and we are like, Father, I've been praying for this thing for too long. The vision is yet for an appointed time, but it will surely come to pass. Because that is the Father that we serve. Hallelujah. But sometimes we don't get to see these things. And that is why in this particular season we are saying that the restoration of prayer and fasting is that which will usher us into the things that God has prepared for us. When Jesus was, had met the disciples, it is not that the disciples did not have, have the ability to cast out that demon. The ability was there because Jesus had spoken to them and he, has set, he had sent them out to go and preach the good news out there, and to go and cast out every demon. So in this particular story, there's this man who came with a boy and he was like, listen, I, I came to your disciples, but they could not do it. And privately, those disciples came and took Jesus and said, ask them, wait, wait, what did Jesus tell them? Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? And he told them, this kind does not go out, but by prayer and fasting. The ability was there to do that which Jesus had commanded them to do 
But unbelief crept in. Unbelief crept in. And sometimes in our walk and in our journey of life, we find ourselves that unbelief creeps in. Maybe you are believing God for some, you're believing God for finances for, the, for your business. You're believing God for healing. You're believing God to, to rescue an entire generation. Let's say someone like me who has been assigned to the youth. But sometimes you get to see the more you pray, the more it seems as if this thing is not coming to pass. Hallelujah. So this is why Jesus tells them, listen, this kind does not go out but by prayer and fasting. Why? Because prayer and fasting gets to deal with our unbelief. Why is that? In, in, in my first point, I'll say this. This is why we pray and fast. Number one, fasting subdues the flesh. Fasting subdues the flesh. Paul writes and says that we, we have been made of three parts. Hallelujah. That is spirit, soul, and body. And when he's writing to the church of Corinth, he says that no eye, no eye has seen and no ear has had the things that God has prepared. It has not entered the hearts of men, the things that God has prepared to man. But he continues and says, but these things have been revealed to us by what? By the Spirit. So when Paul is writing that, he's saying, there is a place where you get to the flesh, the Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. In the book of Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, when you bring it up, in the book of Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, Jesus speaks to the disciples and tells them, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. First of all, he tells us that when you see yourself entering into temptation, there is an aspect of watching and praying that you have, we have not been doing. Hallelujah. So he says, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. Why? Because the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. In Romans chapter 8, uh, uh, Paul writes and says, listen, the flesh is enmity with God. The flesh normally does not want the things of God. Flesh in attack, and this season, flesh it attack nyama. Flesh it attack juice, flesh it attack sukari, flesh it attack chai, flesh it attack all these things. And sometimes, let's say, like for young people, the flesh wants so many things. Hallelujah. But Paul and Andika Nasema, that flesh is enmity with God. However, 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 the spirit man craves and desires the things of God. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that when we got born again, what happened? We became new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, what has come? The new has come. So there's a life that we have been called to of living by the Spirit, keeping in step with the Spirit, Galatians chapter 5 or 6, keeping in step with the Spirit. But when we get to that culture of, and lifestyle of fasting and prayer, the fasting that we do subdues our flesh. First of all, we need to understand, like the, uh, bring up James chapter 5 verse 16. James chapter 5 verse 16. When we pray, there's a result. Prayer should never be mindless. Because in James chapter 5, verse 16, it says this. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man does what? Avails much. Hallelujah. So in this season where we are speaking about the restoration and the power of prayer and fasting, when we get to pray and fast for these things, we have to have faith that they will come to pass. Hallelujah. So his first thing subdues the flesh. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Sometimes our natural circumstances can dominate our thoughts. Our natural circumstances can dominate our thoughts. Peter is walking on water while his eyes are fixed on Jesus. But when the storm came, when the storm was all around him, when he took his eyes off of Jesus, what happened? He began to sink. And that is what our natural circumstances do to us. The natural will always point you towards facts. Hallelujah. The natural will always point you towards facts. Look, and the enemy is an expert at that. He's an adversary. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a rogue. He's an expert. He's a liar from the very beginning. There is no truth in him. So when it comes to our lives, let's say there's, there's something, there's a particular thing that you're praying for, you will find that even in the prayer room, he'll begin to tell you, what are you doing? You think you'll have results. You've been praying for this thing for five years. You've been praying for this thing for two years. You really think that your child is going to get born again? How long have you been praying for them? That is what the natural presents to us. The natural presents facts. Like let's say you want to start a business 
and your bank account is reading me probably close to zero. And he's saying, look at you. You want to start a business? You want to grow your business? Have you seen the economy? Have you watched the news? Have you seen how the economy is going down? The natural will always point you towards fact. But there is a truth that is found in the word of God. And what does the word of God say? And that is what we need to anchor ourselves on. When Jesus was praying and fasting and the enemy came to him, first of all, the enemy in that particular story, we understand that the enemy understands the word. Hallelujah. Because he comes and quotes the word of God to Christ Jesus. But what does Jesus respond by? He responds by the truth that is found in the word of God. First of all, in the temptation, in the, in the baptism of Jesus, the heavens opened and the father said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Sindio. Then in the temptation, the enemy, what does he do? If you are the son of God. He removes an aspect of the beloved. That is what the enemy does. He presents the, he presents, sometimes he will present the word, but he will twist it, kidogo. So when we are praying and we are fasting, what are we doing? We are subduing the flesh. We are not listening to that which the enemy is telling us. We are listening to the word of God. And we are saying, that which the Father has spoken about me, that is what I will anchor myself on, even though in the natural, it does not seem like it. Hallelujah. Number two, fasting brings revelation. Fasting brings revelation. In the book of Isaiah chapter 58 verse 8, it says, Then when you have fasted, your light will break out like the dawn and you will be healed quickly. Then when you have fasted, this is the CB version, it says, Then when you have fasted, your light will break out like the dawn. Because Isaiah 58 talks about fasting. Then when you have fasted, your light will break out like the dawn and you will be healed quickly. When, you're fast, when you fast, your light, your revelation will break through. What is the light of God? The teaching of your word gives light. Psalms 119, 130. The teaching of your word gives light. So in that Tuesday fellowship, when we are meeting for Tuesday fellowship online, when you're listening to the word of God, you begin to receive revelation. And here's the thing. Number one, it subdues your flesh. So when your flesh is subdued, who increases? Your spirit man. So when your spirit man increases, you get to receive things from God. Let's say there's a strategy that you have been looking for at your place of work. Let's say there's something that you, there's a strategy that you have been looking for for your business. Let's say there's a parenting skill that you have been looking for to steward your teenage boy or your teenage girl. In this season of prayer and fasting, ask the Lord and he will do it for you. Why? Because you get to receive revelation from him. You get to receive that which he is speaking about you and your family. Hallelujah. Number three, fasting leads to deliverance. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 6 says this. Is this not the fast I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness. We have been delivered from the power of darkness. Is, this not, is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To lose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke. To set the oppressed free and break every yoke. It is... It is God's idea for all his children to live a free life. He never wants anyone to be in bondage. He never wants anyone to, to, to struggle with the things that the enemy has placed at our feet. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he who the son sets free is free indeed. So I don't know, maybe there are yokes that are in your family. Maybe there are yokes that, you're, that you find yourself in. There's a bondage that you have found yourself in and you cannot come out of that thing. That is what prayer and fasting does. It says, is this not the kind of fasting I have chosen? To lose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke. And maybe even the Bible says to lose the chains of injustice. Maybe someone cheated you out of something. Maybe someone defrauded you. Or maybe something was done to you that you're looking at you. Where were you, Father, when this thing was happening? Listen, the father is saying, I will lose the chains of injustice. To set the oppressed free and to break every yoke. As we finish this season, there's a word of caution for each and every one of us. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 6, it says this. Galatians chapter 5 verse 6 says this. For in Christ Jesus... Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. It's not really about being a Jew. It's not really being about a Gentile. It says, 
The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Hallelujah. When we pray for certain things and we do not see results, let us check ourselves against the law of love. Let us check ourselves against the law of love. The only thing that counts is not your do's and don'ts, but faith expressing itself through what? Love. So in this season of fasting, there are things that we need to let go. We need to let go of gossip. Hallelujah. We need to let go of strife. We need to let go of bitterness. We need to let go of things. Maybe you've had uh, uh, something against someone for years. Because the result of this season is going to be anchored on the law of love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love is the ultimate. Beloved, love is the ultimate. Actually, he says you will, they will know you are Christians by what? Your love. This is my commandment, that you love one another, that your joy may be what? May be full. As you embark on the quest for the rewards of fasting, be sure you have met the conditions required to see results. Before you begin a spiritual fast, get rid of all strife, gossip, or anything else that is out of the love walk. You must be operating in the love of God to see results for a fast. These conditions prevent Satan from coming in and destroying the effectiveness of the fast. If you're not operating in love, your fasting will not profit you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Lastly, as I finish, enjoy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ajua tumesema hii season hakuna nyama, hii season hakuna chai, hii season hakuna sukari, hii season hakuna maziwa. But <laughs> the life that God has called us to is to enjoy. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 16 verse 11, put up sir, you will show me the path of life and in your presence is what? Fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasure are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. God is a God who supplies joy. Especially in a season where we've just come out, we are still there, but in 2020, there was a deep. In 2021, there was probably an even something that even happened more terrible. And you were there, you were struggling with anxiety, you were struggling with depressive thoughts, you were struggling, you were so anxious about what is next. The Bible says that I will give you joy. And the joy of the Lord shall be your strength. That even when we are praying in this season of prayer and fasting and the enemy is telling you, what are you doing? Do you think that you will get results? You stay in the realm of joy. You will like, the joy of the Lord shall be my strength. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things. You even quote the scripture. Actually, the Bible says in uh, Joshua chapter 1, the, Greek, the Hebrew word used for meditation is muttering. You begin to say, you know what, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. The enemy brings sadness. You begin to say, in your presence is fullness of joy, Father. So fill my heart with peace. Fill my heart with laughter. Fill my home with joy. Hallelujah. Because this season, we have been called to enjoy the goodness of God. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you all.